The Malaysian Rubber Glove Manufacturers Association, or MAGMA, expects revenue from the export of gloves to rise to 38 billion ringgit this year, up by 8% from 2020. This follows a 103% surge last year due to abnormally strong demand as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2020, the export revenue stood at 35.3 billion ringgit, a big leap from the 17.35 billion ringgit posted in 2019. Magma President Dr. Supramaniam Shanmugam says the pace is expected to be slower this year due to shorter lead time and lower average selling prices. According to him, the country is in an oversold position of 160 billion gloves, with lead time of seven months for the gloves to be delivered to the end customer, compared with 10 to 12 months in the first quarter and second quarter of 2020. The export revenue estimate also took into account the fall in average selling prices as demand begins normalising with the kick-starting of vaccination programmes. This year, Magma is expecting global manufacturers to supply 420 billion pieces of gloves, with 67% or 280 billion to come from Malaysia. Short sellers are circling AirAsia Group, Bloomberg reports, after the stock more than doubled from recent lows. Citing Bursa Malaysia data, the news agency said AirAsia highlighted a month ago in the online community by Bursa Bets, is now the third most shorted stock by volume in Malaysia. Top Glove Corp remains at the top of short sellers list. The carrier's share price jumped 10% to one ringgit 27 sen earlier today, its highest in a year, as expectations of a vaccine-driven economic recovery led to anticipation of a revival in the aviation sector. Bloomberg pointed out that the rally has left the gap between analysts' 12-month target price for the stock and its current value at the widest in almost three years. The report also highlighted AirAsia's relative strength index rose to 83 today, a level signalling overbought conditions. Quoting Nirgunan Tiruchelvam, the head of consumer sector equity research at Telemer, Bloomberg said that while a revival in travel will be exponentially rewarded in airline stocks, in the case of AirAsia, there might be some concern around balance sheet. AirAsia closed at one ringgit 21 versus the average target price of 55 sen. Some 141.6 million shares were traded, valuing it at 4.49 billion ringgit. The stock's price has risen to current levels after falling to 52 sen on March 19, 2020. Putrajaya says Malaysia will proceed with the purchase and acquisition of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine after countries including Denmark and Thailand suspended the rollout of the shot amid health concerns. According to Bernama, Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Kairi Jamaluddin, who is coordinating the national vaccination programme, said there has been no evidence that AstraZeneca's vaccine causes blood clots in inoculated individuals. He added that so far, there has been no data to indicate any direct link between the vaccine and reports of blood clots, which have resulted in deaths in several countries. His ministry will study clinical data on these incidents to enable experts to draw conclusions on the vaccine. As for Sinovac's vaccine, Malaysia will begin administering the shots this Thursday, with Kyrie being the first recipient. Meanwhile, the minister gave his assurance that COVID-19 vaccinations are free for the public, even if their vaccination centre happens to be a private hospital or clinic. He said charges at healthcare facilities involved in the national inoculation campaign are borne by the government, and the location of one's allotted vaccination centre depends on the address registered by the individual through the MySajastra application. Farmaniaga has inked a local manufacturing agreement with China's Sinovac Biotech, 
for the purchase of ready-to-fill bulk products of COVID-19 vaccine. According to the company's filing to the exchange, the deal was signed last Friday by its subsidiary Pharmaniaga Life Science and Sinovac Life Sciences Co. Both parties will cooperate to do the filling and packaging of the ready-to-fill bulk product supplied by Sinovac's side in Pharmaniaga Life Sciences facility in Malaysia. The Pharmaniaga unit will be responsible for obtaining the conditional registration during disaster, product registration and or marketing authorization from the regulatory authorities in Malaysia for the locally finished product and then to market and distribute the product in the country. The agreement is effective from March 12, 2021 and will remain in force for a period of 18 months. The collaboration is seen contributing positively to the group's future earnings and earnings per share for FY21. Farmaniaga's share price closed 1.8% higher today at 3 ringgit 41 for a market capitalization of 892.4 million ringgit. Gunting Hong Kong has issued a profit warning to inform its shareholders that it expects to record a consolidated operating loss of not less than 600 million US dollars or 2.47 billion ringgit for FY20 versus a loss of 96 million dollars the previous year. It said consolidated net loss should come in at no less than 1.5 billion dollars or 6.18 billion ringgit against a loss of $159 million in FY19. The projections are based on the preliminary review of its unaudited consolidated management accounts. In a filing with the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, its chairman and CEO Tan Sri Lim Kok Tay said, the anticipated increase in consolidated net loss is mainly attributable to prolonged suspension of fleet-wide operations across the group's cruise and cruise-related businesses, as well as the suspension of shipbuilding operations at MV Verton's shipyards in Germany between March and October 2020. According to Lim, the group has been working with various governments to start domestic cruises. However, the COVID-19 pandemic will continue to impact the group's businesses, Lim said, and so it is unable to predict with certainty the ultimate impact the outbreak would have on its business, financial condition and financial performance. <music> 